attraction. I guess you thought you'd get away with it. Well, you can't. Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Talk. I'm John, and today we're going to be talking about Fatal Attraction, the 1987 erotic thriller directed by Adrian Lin and starring Glenn Close, Michael Douglas, and Ann Archer. We're also going to be talking about its brand new 4K Blu-ray release that was just released by Paramount. But before we dive into all that, if you are a fan of 4K Blu-ray reviews, TV reviews, film reviews, tech reviews, game reviews, we try and do them all here on the channel. Nothing helps out more than by liking this video and subscribing to the channel. So Fatal Attraction was released 35 years ago, directed by Adrian Lin, and it is adapted from the screenplay written by James Deeger, who also wrote the book Diversion that this film is based on. This is very much a psychological thriller, almost a horror film, that follows Michael Douglas' Dan, a happily married lawyer who's really on the up and up, seems to have his life together, a really happy life. He's married to Ann Archer. They have a happy family. They have a daughter. But one weekend, she goes away with their daughter to his in-law's house, and he goes out. He meets Glenn Close's character, who's an editor for a book company, and Dan makes it clear to Glenn Close's Alex that this is just a one-off fling. It's nothing more than that. He's happily married. He's just looking to really... You know, he's just looking for some anonymous sex. Unfortunately, he cheats on his wife. And little does he know that this mistake in his marriage is going to lead to one of the biggest mistakes of his entire life. Because unfortunately, Glenn Close's Alex character becomes obsessed with Dan. He, she falls in love with him, and she wants nothing more than to have him for herself. And this is unfortunate for Dan because he was just looking for a little bit of anonymous sex that wasn't going to lead to nothing. Even though he does seem to really be caring for her and really does enjoy what this was for him, that seems to be really rejuvenating his life to me at least, that he would be willing to do this and sacrifice that. Because yes, at the end of the day, this could have destroyed his marriage, but he did not expect this to really come and possibly destroy his entire life. And this movie is fascinating because Adrian Lin does direct a lot of these erotic psychological thrillers. He just actually directed Deep Water that came out earlier this year starring Ana de Armas and Ben Affleck. We actually have a review on the channel for this and this is very similar in tone to that movie. So he's been making, he know he has a formula, he knows what he likes to do, he knows how to make films. He actually directed Jacob's Ladder which is actually another great thriller film that I personally really enjoy. And he knows how to float that line between thriller and horror because this movie actually does have some horrific scenes in it. Um, there's a scene where Glenn Close's character, because she's becoming just more and more obsessed with Michael Douglas's character, and she takes his daughter's bunny and boils it to death in a pot, and that is just horrifying. And even then, as we get towards the end of the film, um, there's some jump scares, and there's even some gore and some just some brutal scenes that really linger on death. So. It very much does float that line. Adrian Lin really knows how to build tension. This movie is very tense, you know, as it, he starts to build up the dread and builds the fear and confusion that Michael Douglas' character is feeling because he doesn't know what is going to happen next. He, first of all, he's worrying about just trying to cover up the affair and not having his wife find out. And then when he finds out that Glenn Close is pregnant, he tries to cover that up too. And things just keep spiraling and spiraling out of control, right down to the fact that He's not worried no longer about covering up this affair. He's more worried about the fact that this woman is going to kill my family because Glenn Close is phenomenal in this movie. She is definitely the shining star. As much as Michael Douglas is good in this movie and Anna Archer is good because she also got an Academy Award nomination for this film, Glenn Close did get an Academy Award nomination for this film and she really does carry this film on her back. It's an amazing performance. Yes, Michael Douglas and Anne Archer do good, but she just stands above the rest in the crowd. And that's why it really is a sin to this point that she has never won an Academy Award because Glenn Close is just a phenomenal actress. She is haunting in this movie as an obsessed, crazy woman who just wants to be with Michael Douglas, even though he makes it clear that's never going to happen. And even to her, it should seem like it's never going to happen. Just a spoiler here, because I don't know if you guys have ever seen the film. When she does tell him that she's pregnant, that is a storyline that I'm not too sure what to think because I went back and watched it again. She tells him that she's pregnant. He offers to pay for an abortion, but she says she wants to have it. Now, Michael Douglas' character said that he called the doctor and found out that she is pregnant. But as the film goes on, I guess we're supposed to believe that she made that up and they just never address it in the end because at the end, again, this is a spoiler, he ends up killing her because she breaks into his house and attempts to kill his wife, Ann Archer. And it's never really brought up the fact that she was pregnant. Like, this guy literally just killed his unborn child. Yes, it was an inactive defense in defending his wife and his daughter, but they never address the fact that she made that up or not. It's just kind of like, ah, uh, you know, she's crazy, so she probably did make it up. But he said he called the doctor. 
I don't know where he got the number from. It probably, I guess we're supposed to believe that she gave him a fake doctor's number, but he's a lawyer. I assume that he does a little more deep digging than that. This is a guy who's supposed to be defending people's lives. I can't believe he just took the random number and said, oh, okay, that's got to be a doctor's number, and I assume he's telling the truth. But then for him to just go on and not believe that she told the truth, that is one big leap in logic in this film that really does kind of bother me because I don't know where that was supposed to lead or what we're supposed to think. Because, yes, we're supposed to believe that Glenn Close's character is a complete psychopath and that her obsession has led her to do completely irrational things. But Michael Douglas is not innocent in there. Yes, he's supposed to be a good husband and a good father who just made a mistake, but he did still cheat on his wife. He still maybe got another woman pregnant while his wife was out of town. I don't think he's supposed to get that happy ending that this movie gives where they're just supposed to move on. I think that that marriage should be over. He still stepped out of line and cheated on his wife, so he's not an innocent victim in here. Even though I think the movie is trying to tell us that he kind of is, but it just doesn't work for me in that sense as far as the story goes. It's kind of a leap in logic that really does kind of bother me because he is still very unfaithful to his wife, even if it's just a one-time mistake. If she wants to forgive him, that's on her, but, you know, if that was me, I wouldn't, no matter how crazy the woman might be. And as far as the filmmaking goes, I really think that's where Adrian Lin really shines. He knows how to really shoot a film. He knows how to move the camera around. He puts his actors in really some precarious positions. They're doing a lot of talking and walking in this movie and a lot of action shots while they're delivering dialogue. Do They're always doing something with their hands, whether it's eating or later in the movie. There's a great long scene in the bathroom where they have the camera like almost in the water underneath while Glenn Close's face is facing down at it. That is really incredible filmmaking. It's just amazing that, you know, most people just set up a tripod and let these people talk, but he really makes sure that these actors are doing something at all times. And he's always moving the camera around. And we'll talk about the 4K in a little while, but this is a beautifully shot film. It's very... The temperature of the film is very cool, the lighting is very cool, a lot of bright white lights throughout this entire film, almost creating like a fog effect in certain scenes, and I really thought that for the filmmaking, this is very well done, and it is amazingly edited. It was nominated for an Academy Award for its editing, and it did a phenomenal job in the editing. I really thought that was amazing how it does cut between two different scenes, especially towards the end when Glenn Close kidnaps Michael Douglas' daughter and takes her on a roller coaster and it's cutting between the panic of Ann Archer's character searching for her daughter and Glenn Close and their daughter sitting together on the roller coaster. That editing is phenomenal in the way it builds the sense of dread. Love that. Just some great filmmaking in this. Even if the story doesn't land for me completely, it's still a good story. You're going to get enthralled with it. It's a little schlocky. It's not really the greatest of story. This is something that, yeah, it got six Academy Award nominations, but I don't think it's the best film of 1987 by far. I think it's a good time. It's more of a pop boiler. It's not the greatest of types of films. I could see why this was a juggernaut at the box office on a $14 million budget making $320 million. This is going to definitely bring in, especially at the time, the middle-aged crowd around Michael Douglas and Glenn Close Sage because these two are definitely, at the time, huge stars. And to see them in this type of movie was probably a huge deal at the time. But for me, it doesn't work completely. It's just a good film. It's not a great film. This is a film that I, I, I will go back to. But it's not something I'm going to run back to year after year. It's something that, you know, a few years down the line, and I'm looking for something just to, you know, enjoy. This is the kind of movie for that. But one thing we're here to talk about is its new 4K release from Paramount. So Paramount Pictures has just released this 4K for its 35th anniversary of Fatal Attraction. Now, they released uh, another Blu-ray for its 30th anniversary five years ago. And they also, Paramount Presents did release, it did release, actually it's Paramount Pictures number one for Fatal Attraction back in 2020. And one big difference between the 2020 release and this release, even though that was a brand new scan as well, is that this one is in its original aspect ratio of 1.85 and the other one from Paramount Presents was 1.78. So there's a big difference there. And the big shining star of this is definitely the brand new 4K scan for this film. It looks gorgeous. This film has never looked better. Like I said in the earlier part of the review, this movie is very cool looking. It's got a lot of bright white lights, almost creating like a fog effect in certain scenes with how it's the very how each scene is lit. A lot of a lot of shots where the where the walls are white or it takes place in bathrooms to really sell that cool temperature tone of the film. And the 4K HDR, it has Dolby Vision on it really does help to make that shine. The Dolby Vision, I think, is the star of this entire package. I think it did a great job making this film look beautiful. Very low grain, I was surprised at that too. But yet, it didn't hurt the film having that little amount of grain. 
but it's it actually made this film look very slick and clean. This is from 1987, where it actually could have looked like it was filmed on a digital camera today. It actually looked so gorgeous. I was surprised at how good this film looked. Right from the opening scene when they're in their house, and I'm just looking at it, I'm like, wow, it really does feel like you're there almost. Because it has a very realistic approach to the filmmaking, where, you know, the interiors and the exteriors really do look like you're on the streets of Manhattan, or I guess on Long Island. And it really has that type of tone, very realistic approach to the cinematography that I really did appreciate and works very well for this film. And the Dolby Vision and the HDR really did help that. And it's really cool. Obviously, I love it when we get the 1.85 aspect ratio because I don't like to see the black bars on the screen. I get why they do it, but uh, I have a 77-inch TV. I want to see the entire screen filled up. So I do always do appreciate that, especially since this is the original aspect ratio. It's even better that we get to see that. So one thing that's a little bit disappointing is the audio track itself. I would have liked the Dolby Atmos track because the audio track, the 5.1 on here, is actually really good and really does shine in certain scenes. Like I said earlier, especially with the roller coaster scene, the roller coaster, the way it was shooting around the room was really well done, really making good use of my rear speakers. I was pretty impressed with it, so it's not a bad track. I just think that this would have really benefited from a Dolby Atmos track, so a little more effort there would have been really cool because I do think the audio in this movie is very good. The actual sense of dread that the tr audio track that they mix for this really helps to build that sense of dread and imagine Adobe Atmos track doing that I really think I would have liked that a little bit more if they would have done the extra work to do that because this is the same 5.1 that we've been getting again not bad just not great it's just Adobe 5.1 HD track nothing special but it's not gonna stand out in the crowd is the best way I could put it it's still pretty good but it's not great and it could have been great and that's what bothers me the most and another thing that's really bothering me about this is there is almost no extras. There's 100% no new extras. The only extras that you get are on the Blu-ray disc, and those are the same extras that have been released previously, and there's not much. You get a look at Adrian Lin, the director, you get the theatrical trailer, you get an alternate ending if that's what you're interested in seeing, and that's introduced by Adrian Lin, the director, but that's it, and that's on the Blu-ray disc, and those were previously released. There's nothing new about that. The 4K has nothing new on it, so there is almost no extras at all, and for such a popular film, that is really surprising, and I get it. It's a studio release. This is Paramount releasing it. They don't have this in the $30 price range. I think right now, actually, I think it just went on sale for $18.99, if I'm correct, so you're really just paying for that 4K disc, and I guess the price matches up to that. But this is one of those ones where I feel like there's a lot of fans of this film, and a boutique studio like Arrow Video or Shout Factory really would have benefited because they probably would have put some extra time into the extras, which I know a lot of people really appreciate, including myself. Or an audio commentary track would have been really nice because Michael Douglas and Glenn Close are still alive, and I'm sure that they would probably love to come together and talk about and look back on the film that they made that is so popular. And I think a lot of fans would have appreciated that, especially fans of this film. So that's the most disappointing thing I think is the extras. Out of everything, that really does bother me. Now you get a really nice slip cover, and you get the regular, but you get the same thing underneath. It's a very iconic poster. It looks very nice. It's going to look nice on your shelf. I'm really glad that you get the slip cover. Again, this is only for the initial run. At least that's what it says on Blu-ray.com. You know, you get the 4K, you get a Blu-ray disc in here, you get a digital code, but it's just your run-of-the-mill studio release. And I get that because Paramount, this is probably a, this was a juggernaut for them. They're going to do the releasing themselves. They're going to take the profit because I'm sure they know that a lot of people are fans of this movie. It's just I would have liked them to put a little more effort into everything else except the visuals. Am I happy that the visuals look this good? Yes, I am. This is a great 4K disc. If you're a fan of Fatal Attraction, this film is going to look beautiful on your screen. I ran this again on two TVs. It looked great on both of them. One was an LED and one was an OLED. It looked phenomenal on both of them. Having the bright lighting in each of, in most of the scenes really does benefit the actual 4K disc itself. The Dolby Vision really helps it. The audio, like I said, it's the same audio. It's still really good. It's just not great. There is no extras, so there's really nothing to really talk about there. The box design is, you know, just run-of-the-mill standard box design with a slip cover. So that's really just your run-of-the-mill Paramount regular studio release. Nothing special. Don't expect to be getting anything like from the Boutique Studios. If you're a fan of Fatal Attraction, I can recommend this. If you're not and you're going to see this for the first time, it's an enjoyable film. It's not a great film. But if you're somebody who's kind of in and out on the film like me where you're like, ah, I'll watch it every once in a while. I'd say wait for like Black Friday or a sale where you can probably get this for like 10 to 15 bucks. I really think that's where it's going to shine the most. If I'm going to give this a score out of 10, I am going to give the Fatal Attraction 4K from Paramount Pictures a 6.5 out of 10. Well, that's going to do it for another episode of Let's Talk. I want to thank you guys for sticking around to the end of the video. And if you did, nothing helps us out more than by liking this video, subscribing to the channel, and then running out and telling all your friends.